Okay, we are starting this unit with surface area. And in this first video, we're going to do surface area of prisms and cylinders. So just for an example of what a prism is, notice that we have two examples of prisms. This one's called a pentagonal prism. This one's called a triangular prism. We name prisms based on the shape of their base. And the base is always going to be this um, this polygon right here. So if it's a pentagon, then we call it a pentagonal prism. If the polygon is a triangle, then it's a triangular prism. The other thing I want you to notice is that the lateral faces, okay, so the sides of the prism, those are all rectangles. Okay, so basically you know what the base is as long as it's not the rectangle piece. And then we call where the rectangles meet the lateral edges. So we also have two different kinds of prisms as far as um, how their bases are related. So we have right prisms and that's when our lateral our lateral edges are perpendicular to the bases and then we have oblique prisms where you see how these are slanted, those lateral edges are slanted. So um, that's what we call oblique. Okay, so in a right rectangular prism like I said before, the, um, the base is whatever is the non-rectangular um, face. And so here these would be the square, this is a square prism. All right, and then, um, or a rectangular prism. So here it, could, it might even be a rectangular base. All right, and then here we have an oblique triangular prism. And the base is still a triangular, but then it's slanted. It's like someone tipped it over. So the lateral edges are slanted, but we still are calling the height from base to base perpendicular. In order to find the surface area of any shape, we really have to find the area of the net. And what we mean by the net is if we were to unfold that shape into just a flat piece of paper, we would add up all of those shapes together. So if I were to find the area of this net, so each of these squares are four by four, so that means that each square is 16, and there's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I would do six times 16 in order to get the surface area. So that is always one way to look at it. And this would give me 96 centimeters squared. All right, for example, this one though, this one would be a circular base. That's what we call a cylinder. So a circular base, I would find the area of the two circles. We're here at the diameter is four, so that means that the radius is two. So this would be pi two squared. So each of those bases is two. And then the, uh, the lateral part, the part that curves around is 4 pi times 8, so that would be 32 pi. And then so I would add those together, so I would have 2 4 pi, so that's 8 pi, plus the 32 pi, that would be equal 40 pi centimeters squared. And then over here, I have a net. And this is actually going to be a, a pyramid, and we'll get into that in the next video. But notice I just have four triangles, and this is an, these are all equilateral triangles. So I would find the area of that equilateral triangle. So remember, each of these is 60. And so when I draw that height, that's going to be a 30, 60, 90. So if the hypotenuse is 6, then the side across from the 30 is 3, and that would make the height 3 root 3. So each triangle is 1 half base times the height. And so that's going to be 9 root 3 for each triangle. So I'm going to take 9 root 3, 9 root 3 times there's 4 of them. So that's going to give me 36 root 3 meters squared. So that's just using net, and that's the whole idea behind surface area. But if we look specifically at a prism, let's do a shortcut. This is where our formula comes in. If I'm adding up a bunch of, of rectangles for my lateral faces, so let's think about this. This is, this is what all the uh, faces will look like if we roll them out. 
All right, so they would have all have the same height, but then they would have these different um, bases. So I'm doing this base times the height, this base times the height, this base times the height. So I'm basically doing the perimeter, the perimeter of that base, because this, this is like the perimeter of that base right here, A plus B plus C plus D. And then I'm multiplying by the height since they're all the same. So that's how we get the lateral area. We're doing perimeter times the height. We call the lateral area just the area of just the, the um, sides. And then we have the two bases. Now remember, the bases don't necessarily have to be rectangles. They can be pentagons, triangles, and so forth. So we keep that open. So we're going to have the lateral area plus two of the area of the bases. And we're, we're keeping, we're just calling that B for now. We'll have to decide on each situation how to find the area of that base. Okay, so surface area of a right prism. We have the lateral area, that's we abbreviate LA, that's just perimeter times the height. And then the total surface area is the lateral area, perimeter times height, plus two times the area of the bases. The, the thing about this formula is I need you to understand what all the letters mean. So whenever you see P, make sure you know it's perimeter of the base. So make sure you know what shape the base is. H is the height, and the height is always the perpendicular distance between the two bases. And then capital B is the area of the base. So for example, if we were doing this problem, I would first try to figure out what kind of prism is this. So these, uh, these are rectangles and then triangles. So the triangle has to be the base. So this is a triangular prism. So when I am doing the surface area formula and I'm doing perimeter times height plus 2B, when I'm doing P, I'm doing the perimeter of the triangle. So these are all congruent. So the perimeter of the triangle is going to be 3 times 6, and that gives me 18 inches. I'm not going to label the units yet. The height is the distance between the two bases. So if I go from triangle to triangle, that's this distance right here. So that's 8, that's what it's labeled in the diagram. So do you notice that it's not necessarily going to be vertical in the diagram? This one, it's, it's going backward at a diagonal. So just be aware of that, that height is not necessarily vertical distance in the diagram. It goes from base to base. And then for B, we're going to do the area of that triangle. So we're doing one half base times height. And so that's going to be very similar to what we just did. Right? We just did an equilateral triangle that had size of um, 6. So this is 3, this is 3, this is 3 root 3. So the area of my base is 1 half 6 times 3 root 3. So that's going to be 9 root 3. And now do you notice I have all of my pieces, right? I have my P, I have my H, and my B. And I strongly suggest you start off each problem by writing the formula and then writing out what each piece is. Then at the end, you can plug all of those pieces in to the formula. So I'm going to have 18 times 8 plus 2 times 9 root 3. So let's do 18 times 8. That's giving me 144. And then I have 2 times 9 root 3. Remember, just do the 2 times the 9. That's going to give me 18 root 3. And that's what you can keep it. That's our exact answer. So that would be in inches squared. If you wanted to, you could get up a decimal, depending on what the problem was requiring. But if it was just plain old surface area, then, um, then I would keep it in exact form. But if it was like a word problem and you had to compare things, then, then that's fine. Okay, so let's talk cylinder. Cylinder is just a prism with a circle as the base, right? And again, you can have an oblique cylinder. And here's a nice example of a cylinder with a fish tank. <clears throat> so the only thing that's going to change is now the perimeter. Our lateral area is still perimeter times height, but the perimeter of a circle is the circumference. 
So instead of saying p times h, I'm doing 2 pi r h. Or you can do um, pi times d h. But more typically, we're going to use the r, since we have to use r for the base. So we have 2 pi r h. That was the same thing as, this was the same thing as perimeter times height. And then we're going to have 2 times the base. Remember b, the area of the base is the area of a circle. So this is the area of a circle, pi r squared. So that's the only difference between a cylinder versus the other ones is we can actually get a little more specific with our formula. Okay? And these are just nice diagrams of showing you how it looks rolled out. So we have, this is what a net of a cylinder looks like. So let's do the surface area of this right cylinder. So surface area equals 2 pi r h plus 2 pi r squared. So what do I need? I need to know the radius and the height in this formula. And look, that's exactly what they gave us. And this one's pretty easy, right? So our radius equals 4 and our height equals 5. Will they all be that easy? No. We'll do some harder ones in class, of course. But this is just to show you how we use that formula. And notice I'm just plugging in the pieces. So again, don't multiply by the pi yet. Just do 2 times 4 times 5. That's going to give us 40 pi plus 4 squared is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. 32 pi. Since they both have pi in them, we can combine them. So that's going to be 72 pi meters squared. So next video, we're going to look at surface area of pyramids and cones.